You know, there's nothing like being in the what? Green room. And yes, we got green on the other side, ladies and gentlemen. We've got green and we've got pink and we've got blue. We've got it all. And I tell you what, you're in for a treat. We're with the one and only Courtney Lee Smith. And, you know, we sent a very extensive bio out there. And I know you all have the bio, so you can go Google her now. But let me ask the question for those that are just tuning in. Who is Courtney Lee Smith? And more importantly, we want to know, what are you up to these days? Hey, 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 Courtney Lee Smith. First of all, I am a wife again. Second chance at love. All That'll right, be story we get into. <laughs> But I am a mother of grown kids and am blessed to be a grandma now. So Congratulations. I'm a grandma. And that's my first and most important role and titles that I hold, my ministry and my marriage. But who I am to the people that I serve. I am a life coach where I talk about grief and loss. But what we're doing right now during this season, right now during the holiday season, we're helping people heal through the holiday. And we are giving back and actually serving the community by giving out free grief tragedy sessions to everybody who actually clicks on the link and books a session. So it is free during the holiday season. That is what we're doing. This is our give back season all the way to the end of the year. So if you are in a place where you are experiencing some kind of grief, some kind of loss, and you need a strategy to find your thrive back, this is your opportunity to get close to us and get that conversation going. You know, I love it. And you know, you pick this title, let's just jump into it. Pivot <laughs> to prosperity. And folks that are tuning in for the first time, they might be curious, prosperity means different things, Courtney, to different people. So when you'll be talking about prosperity, for all you folks who are tuning in and want to know, I don't think it's about a red pill or a green pill or some motion potion if money falls out no. the sky, but I don't want to put words in their mouth. So Courtney, take a moment and kind of explain why you picked this topic. You, you, you watch and you tune in. And what does prosperity even mean? Well, first of all, I like like I, how you see it. It means different things to different people. We have got caught up, and I hear a lot of people, this prosperity preaching. But prosperity is more than just your financial state of being. It's about having a sense of peace. It's about having a sense of joy. It's just having mental, physical, and spiritual abundance. So we're talking about this abundant living where you are living you're a full life and loving unconditionally. That's what prosperity is. When you are not bound by anything in this world, you are free to be yourself. That's where prosperity puts us. Mm, free to be yourself. You know, in a time with so much going on in the uh, economy right now, there's a lot happening. Um, I know it's very serious about COVID-19. It's very serious about the social justice pandemic that's going on as well and so serious about the financial pandemic that's going on. Take a moment, because I know we'll be talking about relationships later and the importance of gratitude, but, but take a moment and how have you and your colleagues remained grounded during this time? Like, what type of conversation are you having with each other to kind of keep each other inspired and motivated during these very, very challenging times that we're in right now? Um, for me, I stand on my faith, and that's what we talk about, just staying grounded in your faith and remembering who's truly in control. If we remember that we're really never in control, we will be able to give that control over to our father, to our I am who has already got the plan laid out before us. And if we know our plan is already laid out, we don't stress about the little things, the little detours and distractions that happen because we know we're going to make it to our final destination. So that is keep your peace, keep grounded, keep your faith in the focus in the right place. If we say we believe, let's believe all the way to the end, even through the circumstances. You know, there's so many people watching right now, and I know we'll get into the whole, in a moment, the whole conversation we're having around pivot to prosperity, but they might be like, I've got a lot going on right now. Um, I've got to take care of my family. I've got to pivot with changes in my business. I got to pivot being a full-time mom, a full-time wife, a full-time yeah. school teacher, a full-time administrator. Some folks are complaining, not complaining, but they're saying, I'm a full-time chef right now because I've done more cooking now than ever. What do you say to people that feel like they're just in a place of overwhelm? I know we're getting to pivot to prosperity, but they're like, there's a lot of pivoting going on at one time. Like, what is their secret to keeping balance if there is such a thing? 
Um, I really don't believe there's a, such a thing as really balance because I want, you know, this relationship service station thing. I think of us as vehicles. And when we think about balance, it's always about always putting more in, air in, taking more air out to get your wheels balanced. And I believe it's truly just choosing priorities. Some of the things that we're juggling, some of the things that we're chasing are really not a now priority. And we really need to just slim it down and say, what is our now priority within this moment? And it keeps us from being having this gigantic balancing act. We got too many balls going up and eventually we will drop one or we get to the point that we're worn out. So just kind of prioritize instead of throwing so many things up in the air to have to catch. Oh, I like it. Prioritize. So you have to joke, throw so much things in the air. Well, I tell you what, Kelvin. I tell you what, Beth. Susan, you're in for a treat. What's up, Monique and Niles? We got to get started. We've got a show, ladies and gentlemen, in five. Don't worry. We'll find out how to pivot. Four. I'm going to ask them what the challenges are. Three, two, one. My favorite thing, we got a show. We'll be right back. <laughs> I made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, Woo-hoo! everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Shay Brown. Mike check, my check. All I do is we win, win, no matter what. Man. Got money on my mind. Man. I can never Man. get enough. And every time I step Man. up in the building, everybody yes. hands go up. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission, and our mission is to empower. Our mission is to inspire, and our mission is to provide you, that's right, you, the entrepreneur, with all of the resources that are necessary to execute that big, big, big vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And I always really like to talk about three visions that you have. I first talk about the vision you have for yourself, you know, the home that you're probably spending a lot of time in right now, right now, um, the vision you have for the car that you're not driving right now, uh, the vision that you have for the food that you want to eat, which is very, very important to keep, you know, weight on, not off, if I can say it like that. And it takes re- revenue, which means it takes resources, so you need the revenue to purchase the resources. The second vision you have is you have a vision for your loved ones the ones you care the most about, especially during this time. Some of you want to make sure you can write a check to send your kids to a school of your choice. Some of you want to write a check for someone's health care insurance or or just pay someone's mortgage. You would feel really good about that. And others, you want to do like me. I have an opportunity to hang out with Mother Dear, and there's nothing like her saying, like she did today, that I got to buy gifts for all my friends, and I'm going to do it on Amazon, which is code for <laughs> it takes revenue that's my card <laughs> to purchase resources and i love my that she's 74 years old by the way she's like i'll just put my card in show me no i know how this works and, and and so that's important to some of you like it's important to me as well and then the third vision you have is you have a vision for the people you were called to serve and i always like to use the example of noah in the bible and you don't have to be a believer i happen to be a believer but you don't have to be one and i won't impose my faith on you but imagine you're noah and God's giving you all the experience. Thank you very much. Giving you all the expertise. I appreciate that. And you're ready to start the mission. And before you start the mission, there's a knock at the door. Boom, boom, boom. You're like, what's going on? Noah, over here, got a report. But man, there are no hammers in the house. Noah says no hammers. Cool, no big deal. I know the second knock. You hate the second knock, don't you? I get it. I do too as well. But what's going on? No nails. Okay, I'm, I got this. No hammer, no nails. I'm getting concerned. What's going on over here? I'm like, Noah, I might as well report there is no wood and no people to put the boat together. Good luck. That's a problem. And maybe that's you right now. You've got the expertise. You've got the experience. You've been praying and thinking and hoping and believing and singing Kumbaya. And guess what? Nothing's happened. And it takes 
revenue to purchase the resources. So this morning, this evening, this afternoon, no matter what time it is, no matter where you are in the world, we got the one and only Courtney Lee Smith. What's going on, Courtney? Hey, hey, I am so happy that you all, the audience, are here to join us. Like you say, no matter what time zone you are in, and happy <laughs> to be on the Entrepreneur Show. <laughs> so, and we all know happiness has a different definition, but it's supposed to live and reside within us at all times. So I'm happy to be here. You know, it's kind of interesting. As, as Nakia, Nakia Calhoun's on, Beniva Young is on right now. What's up, Canopy? She's watching right now. Susan, I see you out there. Carol, I got your message. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. We appreciate that. She's watching. You, I know you're talking about pivot to prosperity. And one of the things you talk about is making sure that you can be grateful for what you have today versus, yes. versus looking at what you don't have. And I know we'll get into grief and a lot of other things later, but take a moment and talk about just why the power of gratitude is always top of mind to you. That's the first thing you mentioned, by the way, during our conversation this evening. Why is that the case? Um, in this space of life, um, it's, it's so limited, everything that we have in these tangible things, the people that we meet, the jobs that we have, the finances we have. So in that moment, we need to be grateful for every opportunity that we have, everything that we hold on to, because it's just a limited resource that God gives us for that time. And as we're grateful for it, God always blesses us with more. So in that gratefulness, God always is willing to give us more because he sees that we're happy and that we're enjoying and we're doing what it is, with what he has. So for me, I've had so many losses and my personal losses. You said we're going to get to that grief when I lost my spouse. But God gave me the opportunity for a second chance. So when you get that second chance, you're more grateful. You do something different. You actually learn how to live for now, not always planning for that later, how we do in relationships. When I retire, when I get a little bit more money or when this, but you spend the time now because later is never promised. What do you think is the biggest challenge holding people back? from doing exactly what you just said. I mean, it can't be the first time someone's heard, be grateful for where you are, be present in the moment. What's one of the challenges that holds us back from being able to do that? And I'm, no, I'm guilty because I'm always thinking about what I want <laughs> and, and where I'm going. Um, so I guess the question is, what's one of the challenges that's been your experience that holds people back from just being grateful for what they have right now? Um, one, I believe is fear and missing out that we won't get what we want. We had, we're, we're chasing what we want more than we're grateful for where we are. Because if we sit and say, Hey, I'm glad for the roof I have over my head. Now we're not so focused on going out looking for a new house. We're not so focused on, you know, I got food in my refrigerator instead of it was so focused on, Hey, I want this instead of that. But our focus is always in fear that we won't get our next. And then there are some of us who just cannot be content, as the word says, with, with a lot or with a little. We can never find ourselves in content because we're always doing the comparison. We, we, we do this comparison thing. Oh, my neighbors have this. What well, they say, want what the um, Joneses have. So if we focus on just what we have and how we are blessed in right here in this moment, we can always say, okay, I'm not afraid if I don't get this thing. I'm going to be good if God don't give me this. Or I'm okay if I don't have what the person to the left or the right has because that means that wasn't for me. Mm, you know, I, I, I love how you say that. For some folks, they're, they're meeting you for the very first time. And as you're talking about being grateful and you're talking about pivoting pro to prosperity, you're talking about making sure you overcome grief, they don't know really your story, and I know you could, you could be here for three days doing that, but take a moment, if you would, and, and kind of give people a little bit of the narrative, the backstory of, of what brought you to where you are now and why you stand so firm where you are. Do you mind doing that? No, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the abbreviated version. Otherwise, y'all can jump on and see features and all that good stuff. Y'all want to hear the longer, more deep entail story. But the abbreviated version is in 2012, I lost my husband. Um, and eight months later, I actually met a wonderful man who lost his wife, same month, same year that I did. We were blessed to be married the New Year's Eve of that year. So a widow and a widower got married. 
and we spent four years doing the grief journey walk together through. So through that walk together and us gaining certifications as life and grief coaches, we realized there was a need to normalize this grief conversation because there are so many people suffering in silence or just shame because they don't know how to shift from a title of being wife or a husband or mother and live just as themselves. I say transitioning to me, they don't understand how to come back to just being me. They live their life so much with these titles and positions and roles they've had in other people's lives. You know, um, what do you say to the person that's listening right now that's connecting and saying, yeah, I've, I've lost a loved one. And I know it's like I lost my dad three years ago. Nothing what you've gone through. So I understand that. But they're like, gosh, how do you get over it? Like, I know, first of all, that's a loaded question. It's probably an unfair question. But but you can handle the best you can. The person that's listening saying, gosh, I, I'm having a hard time just getting over it. I wonder what was one thing she did that kind of help her take that first step forward. It sounds so easy. Um, do you mind sharing? What's, what's one suggestion you would have if someone's watching out there right now and saying, I'm really struggling with this? I believe the first thing we need to stop saying is get over. I'm not, I, don't, I don't think anybody needs to get over it. We just need to learn how to carry grief in a positive way. Because we're, we're grieving every day something we did not get as expected. You know, we lost a loved one, something that is not still the way that we want it to be. So this whole conversation about get over or that we get back to normal, I think the most freeing thing to me was that it is not going to be the same again. And when somebody gives you permission to be different, to be to change, to embrace the now, you can say, OK, I can do something different today. I don't have to stay in this routine. I don't have to stay with these traditions. I can do something different. And when you are given that freedom to do something different, you start walking into that different even if it's just a little bitty step at a time. And it's not that you forget the person that you love, it's that you learn how to respond in a different way and a react in a different way saying, hey, I'm carrying this grief as a victorious person instead of a victim. Mm, a victorious person instead of a victim. You know, share if you would, maybe three steps in order to pivot. You kind of talk about what hold people back. And let's just go with step one. For those folks that are out there, do me a favor. What's up, Deborah Gardner in the house? She's out in Phoenix, Arizona. Thanks for joining. Mario Reynolds, it is always a pleasure. All of you, Becky says she's out there. Harvey Chambers said he's out there. They're all out there watching right now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Here's what I want all of you to do. All of you watching from all the different platforms, do me a favor. Um, pay this message forward. We believe in the giver's economy. The person out gives the competition, out earns the competition. The person out gives the competition, Ooh, out yes. earns the competition. So hit the share button. Courtney's okay with that. Hit the watch party button. <laughs> She's okay with that. And we hit that button and that box pops up. Just, just write those words, pivot to the new you. Just put pivot to the new you, hashtag Courtney Lee Smith, because this is what it's all about. You can pivot right now. So I'm going to ask her for those folks that are hitting the share button. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. You're going to bless someone else. And isn't that what it's all about? Helping other okay. people. She's going to share at least one idea. I'm going to ask her for three. I already asked her. Okay. But she's going to start with one. One thing you can do now to pivot, no matter where you are in your life, here's one thing you can do a step you can take to start pivoting. Please share with us. Well, I'm going to be so generous. I'm going to give you four, Shay. How about There's that? always <laughs> one. She, she said, I'm going to outgive the competition, Shay. I came to outgive. Why, did I, why right. would I expect anything less? <laughs> well, number one is to lighten the load. When we go through grief and go through change, the first thing we try to do is pick up what the other person was doing and carry all the weights. You do not have to be two people. If you've lost your spouse, you don't have to be mother and father. You don't have to be husband and wife. You don't have to become your parents, actually spouse. A lot of times we take on too much. So let's lighten the load and release some of the expectations and responsibilities that we take on. So that helps us, number one. Number one is a release to lighten our load. So I'm going to help you there. Your load will get lighter when you let go of some of those things that are not meant for you. 
Number two. So number one, is number one, for those folks out there taking notes, do me a favor. Oh, okay. Number one, look right below the video and just put release <laughs> the load. Just just look right below the video. No matter what video, no matter what platform you're watching this on, look right below the video. And I don't know if you're on Apple TV, you can't do it. I get it. Okay. If you're in the podcast, I get it. But those that are watching live right now, or maybe the replay, just look right below the video and put number one, release the load. All right. What's number two? Number two is dig a little deeper. We got to dig a little deeper. And that means that we are rediscovering some of the things that we stopped doing. We stopped Mm -hmm. doing. We left some of our gifts, some of our talents on the table because we were so focused on being a wife. We were so focused on being a mother. We left some of our gifts on the table. So this is time to go back and rediscover some of those things that actually created whether it was economy for you whether it was freedom for you whether it's peace for you go back and pick some of those things up if it was drawing if it was singing if it was poetry whatever kind of creativity it is whether it's technology whether it's going to get certified this is the opportunity to go back and rediscover some of the things that you love about you this is finding you on this pivot Getting back to you, the most important version of yourself. Mm, I like that. So number two, number two, thanks a lot. Ivy Morgan Burton is out there taking really good notes, by the way. (laughs) But look below the video and put number two. But number two, dig deeper. Dig deeper. You got this. You can do this. You're, You're amazing. You're incredible. Every single one you're watching right now, this is your moment. Now is your time. All right. Number Three. All righty, righty. Number three is we're going to reinvent ourselves. All of this great stuff, we done released some stuff. Now we have found and discovered our, some things about ourselves. Now we can reinvent ourselves. We can become a new or better version of ourselves. A lot of times we talk, like to talk about being broken. We like to talk about the pieces that we're in. This is the opportunity to become this new vessel in this new season, in this new place in our life. So this is an opportunity to reinvent ourselves. A lot of us have spent our whole life being pictures, pouring into people. God has broke that picture. He has picked up all those pieces. Now you are plate so other people can put some food and give you some nourishment. See where it is that God has you in this season right now. But all those pieces have a place. So just allow God to pick up those pieces, create a new vessel and reinvent yourself. Reinvent yourself is number three. You know, you can't leave us with just reinvent yourself. What do you say to the person that says, I'm a little too, it's a little too late for me. It's a little too early for me. I'm too short. I'm too tall. I'm too fat. I'm too skinny. She don't understand. I got a whole lot of stuff going on. I mean, can I possibly do it? And, and I know many of you are like, that's not you. And if that's not you, you can tune out. But there's some folks out there, and I know I've been there, where I've asked myself, when I, seriously, is, can I really do this? That was good when I said it, but can I really do it? So what do you say to the person saying, she's saying reinvent myself. That's number three, and I get it. But what does she say to the self-doubters? How do you affirm that to yourself any affirmations you use or anything you tell yourself just to take those actions honestly when i just look at and say okay i still have brokenness in me but i'm not going to allow my brokennesses to cut or hurt anybody else so i am going to allow god to fill in wherever i'm weak wherever i'm rugged so that's why i say so with god all things are possible so whenever i feel like i'm inadequate I know that's when God is going to step in. That's when I know he's going to fill in every place where I'm rugged, ragged, and not ready. God has already set me for ready. And it makes me think about when, you know, you talk about Moses. Oh, I got a speech impediment. Oh, I, you know, I'm not too short. Oh, I'm not ready. But God says, okay, you're not perfect, which none of us are. But you're ready for the assignment of reinvention because God has something he wants you to go out and speak to people about. Mm, I love that. So I love that. So, so do me a favor. You're out there. Do me a favor out there. Look right below the video. Look right below the video. And you can write those. You write those words right now. Reinvent yourself. No matter where you are. You got Dr. Sakisha Heilig out there. She's amazing. I know you're on your second marriage and with the situation you and your husband got to connect you to them. They got a group called Marriage Can Win. She'll love this whole relationship thing that you're doing, which is totally amazing. So Dr. Sakisha, remind me to connect you out there. Terry Biggs is watching. Thank you so much for doing it. Ivy is working really hard. She's wrote down all three. She's 
like, what's up for number four? Don't worry, don't worry. She got it down. Rediscover yourself, reinvent yourself. That's what she wrote. Hey, by the way, you're a rock star, Ivy. Thank you so much. Don't worry. Courtney's tuned in. She's watching. She's tuned in. But she'll be able to see the comments, okay? She'll go back. She'll be able to see it. But she's present through the power of those fiber optic lines with you and me right now. It's just all three of us. Do me a favor for those folks out there. I'm going to ask for number four, and it's very important. But hit the share button. If you want to help another entrepreneur, you want to bless a single mom or a single dad or a married mom or a married dad, whoever it is you want to help, hit the share button. Hit the watch party button because Courtney showed up for one reason one reason only, and that is to add value. She didn't ask for a cash out payment. She didn't say send me a zelly payment. She said, Shay, I'm here to serve. So let's find out what number four is for those folks out there. Number four, and these are ways you can pivot to prosperity. And she defined what that was earlier. Talk to us if you would. Number four, 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 four. <laughs> I always want to do that. Okay, we got the drum roll. Number four is actually voicing what the change is. That means reintroducing yourself. A lot of times we'll go through step one, step two, step three. We'll reinvent ourselves, but we sit back quiet and wait for somebody else to find us or figure out what we've become. So we have to reintroduce ourselves, speak it into existence, tell people I am new, I have changed, uh, so people don't treat you like the old you anymore. So get out there, show people, whether it's through your talk or through your walk, reintroduce yourself to people so new doors can be open and you can take yourself to new places. Yeah, you know, as you're saying that, they're out there saying right now, all right, give me some words. You said reintroduce myself. Do I say I'm over it now? Do I say, hey, my name is so-and-so, I'm an entrepreneur now? Do I do like you and say, guess what? I'm blessed with a second marriage, Shay. I'm on my way. <laughs> so is there, is, and I know, again, that's a loaded question because everyone's different, different places, different spaces. But if you had to give some advice, and don't worry, she's used to this whole relationship. This is, this is what she does, by the way. She's probably over there smiling. Like, this is like Merry Christmas to her. This is like Happy New Year to her. This is why she gets up in the morning, by the way. Um, but but how do you how do you do that? What are some words people can do when they voice what they're what they're doing now? And Chrissy Anderson is out there says, yes, yes, yes. Thanks a lot, Chrissy. Thanks for joining in. And Ivy, 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 you're amazing. You're incredible. Everyone go over and give Ivy just a high five, by the way. She put all four down. She said, I'm not missing one. She's in the house. Thanks a lot, Ivy. We appreciate it. Okay. Um, what's one way they can, they can voice it? What's something they can say if they're talking to their friends? I'm going to talk to their doubters. And I know there's two voices. I'm going to turn it over to you. Two voices. There's one voice, maybe they're talking to themselves. you got to reintroduce yourself to yourself. And maybe one thing they can say if they're telling a friend or someone else to support them. What are some words they could use, would you say? Okay. When First of all, when you're talking to yourself, you're still telling yourself, okay, I'm telling you, who I'm serving, who it is I'm speaking to, and how it is I'm going to work with these people. And so when you're saying that, you mean I'm stepping up and impacting somebody's life in some way. And, and I say that whether you're in an entrepreneurial space, whether this is your personal or, or professional life, you have a ministry in some way that you are impacting somebody's life. So you're saying, what is my impact? What am I here for? Who am I serving? What am I bringing to the table in this new space? And that is that voice that you're speaking. And then you're encouraging yourself every day to walk in that introduction, to be confident in that new person. You know, you, you talk a lot about mastering relationships. You talk about the importance of that for those folks that are out there, myself included. It might be like, wait, Shay, can we get in bonus time? I know, I know, I know. I'm going to try to work her. I'm going to try to work her. She said, Shay, I'm here to work. Let's work her, by the way. Jackie Mims is in the house. She bring out the all-stars. What's up, Jackie? What's up, Regina up in New York, New York? So nice. They named it twice. <laughs> I know it's not new, but I love it anyway. I love it anyway. Um, can, can I just get off topic for a moment? Because they're all looking at this whole relationship service station, right? And, and, and so they're nosy. That's what they do, by the way. They go send me notes, and that's what they do. And they're, they're curious, like, what in the LL Cool J is a relationship service station? And why did you decide to call it that? And what is that all about? And for those folks out there, Marvell, thanks a lot for joining. And everyone else, talk to us about the relationship service station. The Relationship What's Service Station. Mm -hmm. It was actually a pivot <laughs> from 
it, it began as a marriage maintenance. It began as an event where we were doing date nights, all these type of matrimony experiences, doing actually trips. So I was uh, um, doing certified trips. I was doing um, weddings, everything that had to do with matrimony experiences. But then when me and my husband got together, God said, well, you all are going to have to do a little bit more than just go out there and throw parties. <laughs> and celebrate with people. So it is a combination of what my husband does for a living. He's a mobile mechanic. Ooh. So it created a relationship mobile mechanic and the relationship service station is like the old fashioned service stations. When you pull up, you hear a bell ring, somebody runs out to give you full service because we want to find out how can we help you? Do you need to pull over to the, um, actual mechanic shop because you need some because you're having a breakdown or you need some maintenance do you need to come into the market because you are hungry for a little social media conversation with us so it's a whole theme of your relationship is on a journey and we want to make sure you don't break down and experience relationship death okay i love it by the way for those out there hit the share button hit the watch party button pay this message forward to someone else, pay this message forward to someone else that's right now are ready to pivot to prosperity. I, I got the question, don't worry, I won't mention, I got the question. Does this ap apply to folks or do you work with folks as well who are not married? So I know you mentioned over and over again that you're married, you're doing things with married couples and so forth. Do these relationships principles, is that something that you also work with individuals that can use um, with, um, I'll say with their family members, um, use some of these relationship principles with their best friends, um, if they're not in a marriage type of relationship? These principles deal with any type of relationship that you want to keep alive. If you're trying to keep this person in the vehicle with you, if you want to keep them on the journey, these are the steps that we use so you have relationship depth. Yes. Yes, okay, indeed. Okay. I, I'm going to ask, don't worry, Marvin. Through I, I, divorce I, or separation. Kathy, I see. Okay, one more question. We, I know, we're, don't worry, we'll get to the next segment, but... It, they're curious. Okay, you can't leave them hanging now. Then Shay, can you get okay? Three quick relationship maybe ideas. You gave ideas on overcoming grief. They're out there right now. They're loving it. I mean, they're watching. They're like, oh my gosh, I love it. Relationship service station, and I can use this with my team. These I can use this with my friends. More importantly, I can use it with my family members. Shay, we gotta ask the question. I'm asking it right now. Can you give us three quick ideas that people can do to strengthen? to bond relationships, to build relationships so they are long lasting and they do lead to prosperity as well. Yeah, I can give you three quick tips. I know you all <laughs> See, I told you she could do it. I, look, she wasn't prepared to do this, but she's there. I love it. She's playing full out. All right, talk to I, me. I know you always trying to catch me off guard. <laughs> but that's okay, I'm right here with you. <laughs> so the number one thing that we have to do is actually be present in our relationships. And I don't mean physically, but I mean actually present and body in our relationships. A lot of times we want other people to be there for us, but we have to be what we want in a relationship. So to build better relationships, we have to say, okay, I want this. And that means we have to learn to love those people where they are and stop trying to make them be us. So that's that being president. Don't make them be you. Love them where they are. Love them at in their flossomeness. And I know that's hard, number one, loving people in their flossomeness. So after we've learned to love people in their flossomeness, mm -hmm. number two is be able to communicate in their language. Ooh, their language. Uh -oh. In their language. That's scary. She probably does a whole class on that, I'm sure. Okay, just give us a snippet <laughs> of what that means. I know some of y'all want to know how to connect with her. I'm going to tell you about how to do all that. And, and this is something she's teaching. So she's not just show up and just watch some YouTube video and say, let me go tell them this. This is something she lives and breathes every day. Go ahead. Yeah. The, the thing is, if you're in a relationship with somebody, you've been there long enough to understand some people are storytellers because they need to have the whole picture out so you can't rush them to be a little short and more <laughs> abrupt, you know, because that's, you know, your language. 
but you have to be able to flow with that so a conversation can be had so that understanding is had both ways. And that's why you have to be able to flow in their language. We do not take the time to learn other people's communication language. We get very stingy is what I should say. We get stuck. We get stuck in our own ways, and that's why relationships break up, because the first thing we say is, I heard what you said, it offended me, or it hurt me, and now we've blocked out the rest of the conversation, but you have to give yourself, say, okay, I understand this person, I understand their language, and it's not hurtful. And, and if we can do that, communicate with each other in our, those languages, you know, I'm communing here at Care with Shay. I know he's fun. I know he's bubbly. So my, this is our space for us to have this kind of relationship and talk with each other. So I came here knowing what your personality was and knowing what your language was. And so otherwise, we would have a dry conversation if I just sit here and said, well, we're going to just have a plain, plain, boring interview today. <laughs> And that would make our relationship, it would be a disconnect that everybody can see. And that is how we end up not catching on when people are communicating with us and we have that disconnected relationship. Mm, I love it. She gave us two. She gave us two. One more. One more. She gave us two. She gave us one was to make sure that we are present where we are. I'm present right now. I'm present right now. And number two, to make sure we're communicating with the other person's language. I know my wife is saying, okay, she, are you writing notes? No, I'm not taking notes right now. I'm focused. I'm no joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> And what's the third one? What's the third one? I know we're in overtime, but we're having so much fun. What's the okay. third one? Uh, Tashika Greentill says hello to Courtney. What about Shay? She's out there watching right now. Uh, Dr. Sakisha Hyde says she's loving this right now. For all the folks out there that are ready to build relationships, that are ready to really make a difference, not only in your life, but other folks' life, just look right below the video. Just look right below the video and just write these words. Yes, just put yes. That's like a bat signal. Yes, I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm going to build the relationships. I'm going to put the responsibility on me. Just look right below the video and put the word yes and then hit the share button. Hit the watch party button. She's going to give you number three. Don't worry. She hasn't forgotten. I haven't forgotten. Hit the share that. button. And when you hit the share button, write these words. Now is your time. Now is your time. This is your moment. This is your day. And you can step forward right now. All right, take it away if you will. What's number three? She gave us some bonuses, by the way. These are how you can strengthen relationships, and we can all use this. Well, at least I can. Number three is forgiveness. Don't be so easily offended. You know, for, give forgiveness. Give grace. We have very little of that usually for the people we're in a close relationship. We'll forgive a stranger before we'll forgive the person that we say we love because we say, oh, well, they should know better. Okay, they're still human. They're still fleshly. So allow for forgiveness and grace in our relationships. And when we do that, we don't become so offended. Let's always not get in our emotions, get in our flesh, and be so easily offended. Let's be in a place where we can forgive instead of creating this distance and division and this relationship death. And that's why it's such a good time right now is to restore relationships especially right now during the pandemic, because you can have Facebook lives, you can have virtual sessions where you don't have to actually be in the room with that person, but you can have that communication for that time frame to begin to restore that relationship by doing the forgiveness pieces. Mm, I love it. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now moving to a segment called Today is my January 1st. Probably a good segue, by the way. And for those folks that know what we're about to do, today is my January 1st. You can look right below the video. Look right below the video and write those words. Today is my January 1st. And today is my January 1st for all my new folks. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is my January 1st represents one of those moments that we get to make a decision and it could forever change the trajectory of our life. So we don't wait for the calendar to say January 1, although that might be important to some right now. We create a January 1 moment every time we make a decision. And there's probably a thousand decisions throughout the day and any one of those decisions could shift the trajectory of your life. So it's a fresh start. It's a do-over. Um, yeah. It's kind of like you work out, that's a decision, or you make a decision that you're gonna binge watch and watch Netflix. That's a January 1st moment. You make a decision, you're gonna eat hamburgers and french fries, I always like to say salt, pepper, ketchup, and my sons love to have hot sauce. <laughs> or, or you go to the refrigerator, you open it up, and inside the refrigerator there's some kale. Go ahead and grab it. Ah, there's some Brussels sprouts, grab that too. There's even some carrots. Normally I have, I have broccoli, I'm having carrots tonight. There's some carrots, that's a January 1st moment. 
So it's a do over. It's a fresh start. It's my past. It no longer equals my future. So my question to the one and only Courtney Lee Smith, when you hear those words, today is my January 1st, is they're writing them right now, what goes through your mind? Of course, it takes me to a scripture and it talks about every day is a new beginning. So that means we have new grace and we have new mercy. So when I think about it, I have my own statement that I always like to say, my today is better than my yesterday. And my today is right now in this moment that I'm living in. So it is better than the last moment. I live where I believe my later is always greater. So every moment I move into is getting greater and greater. And I never allow myself to get caught up in the steps of the past. And I embrace my new beginnings. Mm, I like that. My today is better than yesterday. Hey, that might be a tweet. Or someone do me a favor. Write that right below the video and put her name there for day. I'll take that tomorrow. But my today <laughs> is better than yesterday. What a, what a, what a noble advice. Seriously, like you, you watching right now, go ahead and look below the video and write those words. My today is better than yesterday. If you haven't hit the share button, hit the share button. If you haven't hit the watch party button, hit the watch party button. Pay this message forward. Bless someone else right now. Courtney showed up to add value. She showed up to give, by the way, and boy, is she doing that. You know, Courtney, folks are writing, today is my January 1st. Tashika Green put my today is better than yesterday. Now, now how, what, what about my today in January? I'm messing with you. I'm messing, I'm messing, messing with you guys. I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. But, you know, they're excited. Happy New Year to all my folks that are excited. Just like they were last December 31st on the back of a napkin, apple, a couple cocktail drinks. They were writing down their New Year's resolutions. Not evolutions. They called them resolutions. And we know how that ended, right? So, so <laughs> when you probably heard this before, because I say it a lot, but it's just so true. Yeah, consistency is the key. Consistency is the key. Consistency is the key. And having said that, we all, myself included, struggle with consistency. So what is your words of advice to folks in order for them to be consistent? Or as Dr. George C. Frazier would say, hashtag stay the course. The thing is, for me, if I still have breath in my body, that means I am obligated by God to do something to bless somebody today. And it's just that simple. If I have breath, that means God said you're supposed to be able to bless somebody today. So in that blessing, it means I stay on my assignment. And on my assignment, I always find somebody that I can bless and ultimately be blessed by them. So that's that's uh, that's one of the easiest things I can do when I woke up this morning. <laughs> Talk to us. <laughs> I love it when she does that. That's so spot on. They're out there watching and they're curious. Um, what type of clients does Courtney Lee Smith even work with? What type of clients does her firm work with? So that's question number one. And then question number two, how can they best connect with you? So I'll frame the conversation. Some of you out there listen in as she talks about the type of ideal clients that are for her firm. And maybe you're listening with one ear. Is it for you? And you're listening with the other ear. Is it for someone you know? And you can certainly pay her information for it. And then she'll share with you how you can best stay in the conversation, how you connect with her over and beyond right now. Isn't that so cool? So that's how, cool. Can they, how can they do that? Okay, the easiest way to connect with me is to go to the Relationship Service Station, whether it's on the Facebook page or it is on my website. But if you want to stay a part of the conversation, you can always hashtag Healthy Grief Conversation. That's my tag, Healthy Grief Conversations. And if you want to connect with me, as I said earlier in the beginning, if you jumped in later, the best way to connect is right now in this season where I'm helping you get from what could have been and should have been so you can thrive and still heal during these holidays. Because I know some people are depressed. Some people are lonely. Some people are in their darkest moments right now in the holiday season. So we're talking about healing through the holidays, talking about giving away free grief strategy sessions. So all you have to do is click on book me. Even though it has a price there, you will not get charged that price. You just set your appointment on the calendar, and I'll be there to talk with you. Oh, you'll be there, so it won't be somebody else. It's, it's going to be you. You're going to be in the house. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Y'all get the one and only. She's going to be in the house. What is the website to go to once again? 
Relationship Service Station. <laughs> she made it real easy. Relationship Service Station. She's ready to serve. See, she even got service in there. She's ready to serve. Look, we're moving to a segment now called Rapid Fire. And for those folks that are watching, rapid fire is when we get to ask any question we want. Don't you love that? And Courtney can answer it or she can pause, and, and that means push it forward. And um, the question I ask almost every single night is this one question. And you out there, you, you tune in and listen because Courtney's going to help someone right now. She's, she's going to change some lives right now and in this moment. And the question that we ask is, of all the mentors, Courtney, you've had along this journey of life, You've had so many mentors. What's one of the lessons you've learned from any one of those mentors that you're going to share with us? And I always like to ask the audience to lean in. And why do I say lean? Like, like really, all you out there, like, lean in toward the camera. Like, like all leaning on your phone, leaning on your iPads, leaning on your tablets, and, and listen with new ears. Watch with new eyes as she shares one of the lessons she learned from her mentor that's going to bless you. Go ahead and share with us, please, Courtney, if you will. And I'm going to tell you, one of my greatest mentors and encouragers is actually my husband. I learn from him every day because he totally keeps me covered. But the thing that I learn from him is strict discipline. No matter the pain, no matter the stretching, stick with what you're doing. If that is what you're called to do, just stay disciplined in that area. Mm. Stay disciplined. Stay Discipline. I love it, by the way. I love it. You know, you, you've had an opportunity to work with a number of folks, read a number of books. Of, of all the books you've read, and there's so many you've read, and it's probably an unfair question, <laughs> we'll, we'll take the, the Bible. That's not a book. That's just the whole thing by itself. And we'll That's take Think and Grow Rich by itself. Even Think and Grow Rich, a black choice. You know, by the man in Clark Atlanta University. I got to give him a shout out, by the way, uh, Dr. Dennis Kimbrough. Uh, we'll put yeah. those two to the side. Um, what's one book that comes top of mind to you that you've read that has really helped influence your life that you would like to share with us? And there's so many, but any one that's top of mind to you right now? Ooh, Jesus. Um. <laughs> <laughs> He's listening, by the way. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> he always know when I need a little help to come up with the one book. Um, let me cheat. Look on my shelf real quick. Okay. But Actually, this is a book that I read read long time ago that would actually be very pertinent to this conversation that we're having. And it's called, very simple read, it's called Who Moved My Cheese? Mm -hmm. um, very simple book is because you're so busy looking for the cheese that was moved that you don't realize that there's cheese all over the place and there's opportunities everywhere. And, and that is one of the things, if you miss out on the cheese in the trap, you know that there are many opportunities in cheese located other where. Don't get so focused on the trap cheese. Mmm, I love that. That's that's spot on. I love that. Um, what is one of your your best productivity secrets? Like so much <laughs> going on, how do you stay productive? How do you stay organized? Um, I am big on calendaring. Mm -hmm. But do I do allow for flexibility, and I think that's one of the things that we as entrepreneurs don't allow enough flexibility time in our day. Mm -hmm. We have um, become so structured that if we are asked to do anything, it throws us all in a big schedule, and it throws us into chaos. So I always allow time for the things that I did not schedule. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And um, what do you do for fun? I mean, we're now saving the world, um, <laughs> saving relationships, <laughs> making a difference for other folks on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. What do you do for fun? My relaxing fun is actually cooking, actually cooking, experimenting with different recipes, getting in the kitchen. That's kind of like my place of joy. Whenever I need to let off some steam, I turn on the stove, crank up the oven, put a skillet on, put a little grease in it, and make it happen. <laughs> you know, I'm just curious, and it may have nothing to do with what we're talking about, but how do you really expand outside your comfort zone? I, I know for me sometimes there's some things I'm just uncomfortable with, and it's, and it's hard for me to get outside my comfort zone. So how are you able to do things sometimes that may seem uncomfortable, but you know it's the right thing to do? because you have to expand your comfort zone. An example might be someone that's not into technology. That might not be their thing. Someone that wants to communicate more, and that might not be their thing. So how do you expand your comfort zone? How do you do things sometimes that are uncomfortable? 
first of all, I'm honest with what my fears are. A lot of us want to say we don't have a comfort zone. A lot of people say, oh, I'm open to everything until that everything comes. So we must really analyze and be honest with ourselves and say, okay, this is not my space. And then seek help in that space. Because that's number one thing. When I realize that's not my gift and that's not my track, okay, let me go talk to somebody. And then after I realize, hey, I might not be the best in it, but I I can at least begin to walk in it. Mm, I love it. You know, let me first say thank you so much for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. You have a heart to give. You have a heart to serve. You're playing full out for those folks out there that want to make sure, and I'll give it to you if you have your final thoughts. Um, you want to connect with her, make sure you go over to www.relationshipservicestation. Is that right? www.relationshipservicestation.com. Now, if you got a hold of this and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm watching this and you're not sure, go there. If the site's still up, go ahead and register. Like, like jump on right now, by the way, to you out there right now. Make sure the website works. Sometimes these websites don't work. So open it up right now. Let's go to www.relationshipservicestation. She's like, oh my God, is it working? I'm pretty sure it's working. But you, you, you at it's home, you, you, you check it for her, okay? You check it for her right now. You do that. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to turn over to you. We've got to have you back. But I do want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. We appreciate you. Um, you're a rock star. And it's time for us to build those relationships. Over to you for your final thoughts, for your final comments. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. My final thoughts for everybody that's on here, because I know we are all doing a pivot at some intersection in our lives, but I want what everybody know is to embrace the now. Let's not go back to chasing the past, chasing the normal. Get ready to embrace now and open your arms up for everything new that is coming. It's some new blessings that's coming, so embrace the now and enjoy where you are. Mm, embrace the now, enjoy where you are. I want you to know as you're watching right now that you're amazing, that you're incredible, that you've got so much greatness inside you right now. And for you, today is your January 1st. You can establish that relationship that we're going on for on and on and on that for you today is your January 1st why because you have an opportunity to expand your comfort zone and impact the lives of others and with that being said I know for you right now the road is so smooth and it's bumpy but I know one thing the lights are shining you got to put your sunglasses on because for you the best is still yet to come the best is yet to come the best is still yet to come with that being said for those folks who I know who's doing all that yelling and screaming. My name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And I promise you from the bottom of my heart, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again next time. Remember, time is long. Life, on the other hand, surely is very, very short. So you got to live in the moment and you got to make it count. God bless and we wish you success. We're out here. Thanks a lot, by the way. Courtney, you're amazing. We appreciate you. Thank we'll you. see you all later. Hit the share button. Hit the like button. We'll talk to you soon. We got to go. We're gone. Peace. I made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Shay Brown. My check, my check. All I do is we win, we win, no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can yell with you, you know. And every time I step up in the building, everybody hands go up. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there. Thank you, thank you, Captain.